views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is incredible what we are doing today on the show. And for those of you, listen, Dr. Glenna Rice is in the house and we are talking today about trust. Uh, What is it? How do we know that it is a thing? Uh, And what is the point of view that brings us to the table to either create an abundant life or not. Uh, Trust, what is it really? Now, this is something that Dr. Glenna and I have a little bit of information on. Let me tell you about who she is. See, I love how I've gotten to know her over the years. And I want to go back in time when she was talking about things like, you know, I think I want to go back to school. I think I want to do this. You know, maybe what she doesn't say, think that's me. She's pretty clear about what she wants to do. But then all of a sudden, it's like she shows up one day and she's now Dr. Glenna Rice. What did she have to do to be there, to get that, to show up as that? But beyond that, She is an individual that helps other people all over the world understand how amazing they are and how unlimited, or shall I say limitless, the possibilities are in life. And the most magnificent thing that I learned from her amongst many others is even in times where I'm thinking I am not a happy camper today, stop and say, what else is possible here? She's a physical therapist. She's owner of Access Physical Therapy. She's an access facilitator. She teaches access consciousness seminars on parenting and the whole body. A single mother, and uh, believe me, I've, I, I feel like I've been watching her chilling grow up here. But today, she is bringing to the forefront a conversation that is all about trust. Dr. Glenna, it's great to have you here. Don't you love how these topics show up? Oh, totally. Thanks for having me on. I always love this show. I have so much fun chatting with you. I'm excited about this because this is something you've been talking about. And I think on our last show and possibly other shows before you said we should do a call about trust. Yeah. So do a show on trust. So I was just, when I was coming up with ideas, it just was really loud to talk about this today. Um, Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because um, the word trust is thrown around. Well, wait a minute. We just finished. Lynn just finished doing a show on money. So what is on our dollar bill? What is the word that's mm -hmm. on our money? Trust. In God. In God. Yeah. 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 But we've got it on a dollar bill. So does it really mean we're trusting in God outside of the dollar bill? Or does it mean we're going to trust in God? in place and have in trust in God be on the dollar bill. I mean, you and I can go on about this, but tell me a little bit from, from your perspective, you know, what is it about the word trust that's often misused? And most of us don't really understand that it has to do with behavior. Yeah. Um, so trust is, there's a few words that we often use 
um, <laughs> that we're not using necessarily correctly, and trust is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're not speaking to the energy of what of what the word actually is. We're speaking to what we think it is, or we want it to be, or we hope it should be. But trust is actually to uh, a word about knowing, to trust that you know what a person will show up like, what a situation will show up like, to have an awareness about the situation. So you trust that, that person will be a certain way. You trust that something is going to show up, you know, that, that in the future, or you trust that you're going to be who you are. But often we use trust as this word like it's blind faith, like, oh, I trust it. And we kind of throw it out there to the universe without actually being aware. And then you can get blindsided. You know, how many people did you trust were going to pay you back money when you loaned it? Oh, trust me, I'll pay you back. Or relationships, how many people do you, you know, trust um, that, no, I won't hurt you. <laughs> you know, and then the relationship goes totally bad. But you threw <laughs> away your knowing. So often what people do is they throw their knowing out the door when they use the word trust. And they're going on blind faith, not awareness. And it's actually a word about, you know, having confidence in what you know. Trusting, you know, I have a weird one. I was just speaking with someone today. It's like, I can trust that I will never remember to bring the grocery bags into the grocery store. Like, I trust that about myself. I wow. For years, I've had those bags in the backseat of my car, and I trust that I will not bring those bags in. So I can stop making myself wrong about it and know that that's one of the things about me that I can trust in. Uh, sometimes I might remember occasionally, but it's a really rare time. So it's, that's a really different way of using the word trust, and you often hear it. Um, you know, I, I trust that people are going to be people that are late or people that will be on time. I trust this mm-hmm. person will be on time. And if you come from it from that place of knowing, you can, it, it gets you out of the wrongness of what's being created. Because if you trust someone's going to be there when you actually know they never show up on time, then you're not going to get upset with them when they show up late because you already trusted that they were going to show up late. Yeah. So a little different yeah. twist on it. it- it's yeah. a little different twist, a twist on it. And, you know, when we think about it, like, for example, you know, you were talking about the definition. And let's talk about the de- definition that we have in, 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 in the, the Webster version of it. it here's what it is. Yeah. It's the assured, not like the probable, but the assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. And then, you know, and and then it's also what you said. It's one in which confidence is placed. Uh, You also said it's a dependence on something future. It is. If I say to you, Glenna, you know what? We're going to do that show on trust. And you and I agree to that. And we show up today after you've planned to do the show on trust. And I say, you know what? I don't really feel like doing the show on trust Something happens. Let's just take that simple example and say what the range of possibilities are where people then go. Where do they go? I do cut out for a second, Dr. Pat. I missed it. Yeah, yeah, where do they go? Like if you and I plan to do a show on yeah. trust and then lo and behold, I show up and say, I don't want to do it on trust. Uh, I think I want to do the show on makeup today. Uh, you'd right. be like, well, wait a minute. I plan to do the show on trust. <laughs> yeah, and, and if I trusted what you said when you said you wanted to do on trust, then I'd be upset. I could be upset. I could be mad at you. I could think you were a flake. Like, um, now what am I supposed to do? Look at the situation she just put me in. i got to come up with a whole new show about makeup. And I trusted she was going to do this other show. But then I could also go by, like, okay, I know Dr. Pat is, by the, you know, every 10 seconds she can change what she wants to talk about. She can, you know, in a minute come up with the best show ever. Without, you know, I've turned in my questions late enough that I know you're on top of things. And <laughs> I would trust it. I would trust that that's who you are. And it's like, okay, I'll go with it. So if, if I was using trust as this knowing and awareness of you, you know, and how you show up, I could trust that this is going to be fine. This show will be amazing, no matter what topic we talk about. And then I don't get upset. And then it's not a wrongness on either of us. And there's not all the angst and the upset around it. It's like, oh, okay, we can go with this one. <laughs> but you know and, and you know you were you and I are laughing about it because we know that that is actually a true statement because we've actually experienced it um yeah and you know if we're looking at this when we use the word what do we mean you know there's a question mark sometimes of if I'm not 100% clear 
then what am I truly saying? What can be the interpretation or misinterpretation? You know, listen, if I go into work and my boss says to me, I'm going to give you a 10% raise. This is what you're getting this year. I'm expecting to get, expecting to get a 10% raise. If that doesn't right. happen, that is a whole lot of ugly that can show up. How important mm -hmm. is it for us to keep our word. And I don't mean like mushy, wishy-washy, uh, well, I think it's going to happen. You know, there's the word and then there's the perceived word. Tell me where the mm -hmm. disconnect of this goes in our consciousness. Yeah. Um, yeah. quite a question. <laughs> it is. Um, I, well, yeah. <laughs> You know, this is, it's kind of interesting because a lot of that is trusting what you know about a person. Like if yeah. you, um, and, and asking questions like truth, will this person give me the right and see if that feels light or heavy? And I talked about light and heavy so many times on the show. What's true yeah. for you makes you feel light. What's heavy is a lie. If someone says they're going to give you a raise and it doesn't feel very light, um, then you can start asking some questions about that person. And if it's someone that's had a history of not doing what they say, then you can trust they probably won't. And if they're a person that tends to, that that's what you've been seeing and knowing, and that feels very light to you, then you will trust that the person is someone that would do that. Um, and it's really, what it's, this is really just about knowing what you know and being willing to access what you know and then trust that you know what you know. Because the person we trust the least, or what I see people doing the most of, is they do not trust their awareness. They'd rather go on blind faith or what they hope would show up. Like they would hope all people were really kind and nice. Um, but that's not how most people, all people show up. There are people that are going to be devious and you've got to trust, trust that they are a devious person when they are, or trust your knowing that you have that awareness. I mean, what, you know, what a difference that would be if you had that awareness and were willing to have that about everyone you had interactions with. Because um, if someone's a liar and you trust they're a liar, then they're, you know, they're going to lie to you. Um, which actually makes it quite a bit easier. In fact, the best thing when people are liars and they lie to you is never to let them know that you know that they're lying, and then you have all the um, power in that situation, or you have the upper hand because you're the one that has the knowing. So trust yeah. gives you a lot. Of, you know, when you're coming from a place of awareness, you have such an easier way of negotiating everything you're doing um, in your life. Yeah. I mean, one of the things you said that's really super important, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about it. You know, we're going to talk about, you know, how do we use the word trust? Uh, both Glenn and I are going to give some examples. What happens when someone literally, and I want to say, obviously, makes a promise? What happens when that happens? And then what actually shows up is not what promise, what's been promised. What do we do? Where do we go? And what are we going to know about that? Is it actually betrayal? Oh boy. Uh oh. I used the word. Glenn is going to be like, why did she use that word? Yeah, guess what? Broken promises, studied them for eight years. Betrayal is one of the words. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sometimes I feel I've got to run away. I've got to Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong for the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease we are not going to let you down we're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme talk radio the message will continue the conversations will become stronger and the healing epic 
Are you ready to start winning at the game of life? Lynn Brown, host of Get Into It, Winning at the Game of Life, is here to help you reach places and goals that you never thought possible. Lynn is an intuitive healer with a specialized background in financial healing. She combines her intuitive nature and her wholesome approach to financial planning. To learn more about her financial planning services, contact her personally at letter R, letter U, Intuit.com. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving, even in the face of adversity. Say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Tune in to the Psychic Professors Show, the Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes on Transformation Talk Radio, featuring a variety of spiritual topics such as psychic art, spiritualism, EVP, psychic development, and mediumship. This hit call-in show provides listeners with breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten their lives. Visit spiritartgallery.net for show days and times. Hey everybody, Dr. Glenna Rice is in the house. Trust, what is it really? So what I want to say about this show today is uh, the phone lines are open and so is the instant message. If you go to the drpatshow.com on the right-hand side, you're going to see a little box where you can type in your question and we will get your question on air. If you'd like to call in and get some help and guidance and as I call it, reframing, uh, from somebody that does this for a living, Dr. Glenna Rice, please go ahead and do it. 1-800-930-2819. You know, the question really is about this. Um, you know, ha- have we all been in situations where trust has shown up in ways that we didn't expect? Um, and, and Glenna, you know, let's talk about this. You know, when we use the word We talked about what we believe it means, but then we use the word and some action happens that's like, uh, I'm having a mental disconnect here, right? So what we heard isn't what really was meant, and now we got to figure out what the heck is really being said. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, because what comes out of people's mouths is not always what they do. And people don't always say the things that they're actually going to be doing, and that's tricky. You know, we want to trust what people say. We want to believe people are honest. Um, And they aren't all the time. I mean, it may not even be from a place of, uh, you know, maliciousness. It may be that they're just really not capable of doing the things they say they're going to do. You know, Um, my kids say, yeah, Mom, I'll do the dishes tonight. And they don't. But it's not because they're malicious. It's because they get involved in other things. It's not that big deal, big of a deal to them. Um, so I stopped trusting that they would do the dishes. I started trusting that they wouldn't, and then it's a really nice surprise when they do. And I'm pleasantly surprised when that gets taken care of. Um, but they can be malicious also. Yeah, and you were starting to bring that up before the call. What do you do in those yeah. situations where someone yeah. is just blatantly, like you said, betrays you? Yeah, what do you do? Or do you, you roll over? I mean, you, you know, I I think sometimes when I do a show like this, people think that just because, you know, we can be very positive and forgiving that we're actually condoning a behavior. Maybe you can talk to that a little bit. No, I mean, it would depend on the betrayal, but it wouldn't oh, yeah. work for me. It would not work for me. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a thing called killing energy that you can be. It doesn't mean you have to kill anybody, but willing no. to be the energy that kills. You know, willing to be an energy, you know, if you have that energy 
accessible. Like it's part of you. You barely ever have people do these kind of things to you because they know that you're not someone to mess with. You know, you're going to cut them up in little pieces energetically, or maybe you'll do it in some other lifetime. You know, someday it will happen if you mess with me. I mean, that's an energy, but like in business and everything in your life, it's so, um, if people don't want it and it's so incredibly helpful to have that energy available, the willingness or the ability to be a killing energy because people don't mess with that energy. um, Like a bully does not bully someone with that energy. And I've worked yeah. with children that are bullied and my own children and to have them have access, like, you know, if you did that again, I would kill you. Yeah. Like, and it will, and they don't, those children don't get bullied. They never have those situations. They actually never have to fight anybody because no one that's a fighter is going to go up against that energy because they know what it is. Yeah. Um, so in, in yeah. some situations I would be that. <laughs> in other ones, I, I, there's also a great question is something really, you know, like that betrayal energy happening in a business situation or something with a, or with a relationship. Um, yeah. Is, I'd ask the question, what's so right about this? I'm not getting. Yeah. It could Let's be talk that about that. Just, Let's talk about that yeah. because, you know, business success is clearly dependent upon um, degrees of trust. It really is. I mean, especially yeah. now that we're living in the virtual wor- world, you know, you and I do this show. Sometimes you're clear across the uh, the country and, you know, there's a level of trust that says it doesn't matter. You're going to be, you know, you and the producer and the team here going to call Glenn or no matter where she is and going to make the show happen. You work with people every day. You know, you're part yeah. of an organization and you're part of that mm-hmm. organization because they've said some things to you that align with your values. And if for some strange reason, something happened that didn't set up a feeling of trust, there would be emotional, spiritual, and maybe physical consequences. Don't you think? <laughs> um, there yeah, I mean, it's so situation dependent. It could be yep. that that person is just not not part of my reality anymore. They're not part of my universe. Um, you know, I know I would know now that I can trust that they aren't someone that's going to show up the way I'm asking. Um, and without making them wrong, it's not like it's not like so much forgiveness, but it's like just acknowledging who they are. Yeah. And okay, oops, I wasn't aware of that. I am now. You get, you know, you get when you get what you get when you get it. Kind of an inf- information. And Mm -hmm. what's so right about it? Like, at least now that I know I'm not going to continue creating with this person in the future because it's not going to work. Now, if it was an illegal thing or something like that, it might require a little bit more um, going into it. But I've never had that show up. I've actually been really, really lucky to have amazing people work for me that do always show up. You know, sometimes they don't show up exactly how I thought they would. And then I can ask questions like, oh, okay, so this person was hired to do this. Yeah. But I can still get there's a great person. Am I not really seeing what they actually are good at and what could they do in my business? Maybe, you know, I hired them to do some accounting stuff and they're way better at making telephone calls and connecting to people in my classes. And I didn't see that until I hired them and started working with them. Right. Now, I could get upset because I trusted them to do my accounting well, and instead they're doing this other thing. But if you're open to all possibilities with the people and you have a knowing that there's something great about this person and ask questions like, will they contribute to the future of my business or my family or my life? Then you can start looking at what are their gifts that can contribute, which just creates more for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think what you're talking about is exactly, you know, for me, what I studied. And, and that is, listen, bad things sometimes happen to good people, right? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, when that shows up, you and I have enough wherewithal to see it. Maybe you don't see it the way I see it or don't use those exact words, but we take a look and we say, wow, okay, I have an understanding now of what just happened here. Um, You know, we see it in the workplace all the time. You know, a boss may make a promise to somebody and the promise isn't kept because the boss is fired. Yeah. Um, and, and and the employee's like, well, Joe made that promise to me. And the new, a new person comes in and says, okay, hello, I'm not Joe. Um, but in the average everyday underpinnings of life, we get to choose how we're going to react and respond to things. 
right? When Absolutely. we are clear with what we say and what we mean, what can happen with that? Uh, well, if some when you're using like if you're using the word giving using the word trust right now, there's other words, mm-hmm. but if you're clear about what that actually is, like it's a knowing about someone and a confidence in something you're choosing, then when you say it with that awareness, when you say trust, you will know if you're doing it that way. It'll be it'll sound really funny when you're just doing blind faith. So, well, I trust they're going to do that. And it'll, you'll just almost stop this for a second and go, wow, okay, is that actually true? Mm-hmm. Am I just going on some blind faith and not checking in the energy here? What is this person actually going to choose? Um, so it gives you some information like that when you're using words so that energetically they match what they're actually saying. And you can so often hear it when other people speak. Like, you know, can I trust you? That's a really good one when people say that to you. Um, oh. It's almost like they're going to skewer you. They're setting you up right then, then and there for something. Because you don't even, <laughs> where do you go with that? Can I trust you? It's like, trust me with what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, isn't that an interesting, what do you do with that, Glenna? I mean, I, I'm sure that, you know, many people listening, I've had somebody show show up and say, hey, listen, can I really trust you with what I'm about to tell you? Um and a lot of people would say, of course you do, without even knowing, right? Um, right. But aren't we talking right. about an introspective review and analysis of who we are first? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Can, yeah. Can you trust you? Can you trust what you know? And that's a beautiful, beautiful way to live your life and be is to trust that you know what you know and have confidence in it Um, because it is true. If it's light, Mm -hmm. it's true, and you can choose with so much more clarity and so much more greatness. That's how you say it? Yeah. um, When you're coming from that place of knowing what you know. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, someone said, yeah, can I trust you? It's so funny how many times you've, like, told someone something like that and then someone else hears about it. (laughs) Like in high school, the way gossip can go around. Can I trust you won't tell anyone? And two seconds later. Everybody knew. <laughs> um, and I, I, we could probably all look back to those moments where we've done that. And when we said we knew that they weren't going to keep the secret or they weren't going to, you know, they were, we knew they were going to share some information that we gave them. Um, somewhere before we said that, even we had a knowing about it. And that's how you can u- use the word trust. So can I trust mm-hmm. you aren't going to say anything and then see if that feels like, and if it doesn't stop talking. Or tell them something different. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna go into details about this, but I had an experience last night and I I, I had the preparation for today's show in front of me. And all I kept thinking, because you know, I, I remember you saying check in check in with yourself every ten seconds. I did I get that right, Glenna? Every ten seconds? Check well, in with I, yourself. Choice is ten yeah, choice is every ten seconds, kind of the same thing, yes. Every yeah. 10 seconds, you can make a different choice and be aware make of a new different things. Choice. Yes. Be aware of new yeah. things. So every 10 seconds, I'm checking in. Do How do I feel? Heavy or light? And I'm telling you, I, I was on a call for about an hour. And I, I felt so heavy that when I got off the call, I was literally exhausted. And I tried to make it right. We're going to take a short break. When we come back... Glenn is going to help us understand the dynamics of trust, mistrust, and consciousness. What can we do not to fall in to the energetic vampire trap? And when we come back, we are going to talk about integrity. And how does integrity look? Here's an example of uh, one of... 1,200 pages of interviews I did on the topic. Here's the way somebody described a scenario with a company that was getting ready to file bankruptcy. This is what she said. We don't cut corners. We don't sell seconds. We don't advertise fraudulently. We are going to do everything above board in compliance with rules and regulations. We will treat each other with respect and high regard, and every interaction should be of that nature. Everything and everyone will be treated in the same way. We'll address issues immediately and truthfully and honestly. 
will make sure everything is clearly communicated and clearly demonstrated. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back. Tune in to the hit show, Mouthing Off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Brand consultant Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the RAD Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com, that's Jen with two N's, morgan.com, or call 206 9 the earth is an ever-changing being goddess light shamanic healer brie gibbs guides us through the ascending worlds bringing forth knowledge and truth as a light creator she is here to provide new information needed at this time in our evolution join brie as she shares messages from guides spirits ascended masters goddesses and others Tune in the second and fourth Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, and Thursdays, 1 p.m. Pacific, for Silver Gaia Radio. Have you wanted to be intuitive or psychic but thought those gifts were only for certain people? Hi, my name is Deb Acker, and in addition to being the host of Truth Talk Radio, I'm an intuitive life coach and energy healer. I clear energy blocks to all areas of life, including intuition. Did you know that we're all intuitive, but many times we receive certain messages in our childhood that block us from being able to tune into our intuition at all times? What if you could clear these blocks to access your gifts and always know the truth in any given moment? Don't think it's possible? I was there not long ago. I thought only others had these gifts and you were either born with it or you weren't. I now know we're all intuitive and you can clear the blocks that stop you from being able to access your intuition on all levels. On the other side, I now help others to become intuitive, even psychic. And if this resonates for you and you're ready to own your intuitive powers, I'd love to gift you with my pattern identification session. Simply contact me on the contact page of my website, deborahacker.com. That's D-E-B-O-R-A-H-A-C-K-E-R.com. And let me know you heard about this gift through Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to connecting soon. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Dr. Glenna Rice is in the house. Um, I wanted to, before we get back on the conversation of trust and integrity, because they are related, um, uh, you know, Glenna, you are traveling all over the world. There are a number of things that uh, folks can engage with you. For example, whether it be in New York, San Francisco, all over the world, Um, you know, you're doing, uh, an event in San Francisco on the 22nd. Can you tell folks the best way to find out all of this? And, you know, if people want to learn how to develop, you know, new perspectives on life, how to live in the world of possibilities, this is also what you do. This is what you teach. How can they find out more about that? Yeah, so glennarice.com is my website that has a lot of links and information to go to access pages. Now, Access Consciousness is just in the process of um, launching their new website. So this week, this was, it's kind of strange what, what I can give out to people because it's about to change. But right now, if you go to drglennarice.accessconsciousness.com, you can get all the schedule of all my events. And in the next few days, if, if the launch goes well, go to accessconsciousness.com backslash Glenna Rice. 
or Dr. Glenn Rice will be my new link direct to my profile page. But you can also go to accessconscious.com and put my name into the search engines and you'll find everything I'm doing. Yes, I'm doing a really exciting event. So I'd love to chat really quickly about it. Please. So April 22nd is Earth Day. And Access does an entire global um, event, which is we do a Access body process called the restoration of the communion with Earth. And people trade this in groups and events all over the planet. I mean, Access is in 170 some countries and people have groups everywhere. So you'll get to, you know, have a little introduction to access, what it's about, some questions, do some clearings around the earth and for your body, and then trade this body process with someone in the classroom. So you'll get to receive and gift the process, which is really what it is, is restoring our communion with the beautiful planet, this amazing planet we live on all the time. And um, so you can walk on this planet now with a different energy after you receive it. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of, I'm, I'm going to be hosting an event here in San Francisco, actually in Marin County in Puerto Madera. You can find that on my Facebook page or Dr. Glenna Rice is my Facebook page. You can like, or you can just Glenna Rice is my, um, what do they call it? Timeline page. Yeah. On both of those, you can find information there. And I, you know, anyone that's in the Bay area that's been intrigued by what I've been talking about, um, please come Saturday. It starts at six o'clock in Marin and you can find out the information, um, on Facebook is probably the easiest way to find that that information or that drglennarice.accessconsciousness.com. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited to be hosting this. I hosted it in Seattle last year, and it was yeah. a wonderful, successful event. I had so much fun with it there. Um, we were right on the water with the sound. Yeah. yeah. Contributing. You know, I, I have to say this. I can't imagine you not having fun, Glenna. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just can't. I don't even have, like, any kind of image, like, Talk to Glenna Rice. Let me imagine her not having fun. I, it's not even in my consciousness anywhere. Um, and, you know, that's what we were talking about. I shared a quote from uh, my research. And that quote, by the way, Glenna, came out of um, a, a discovery uh, that this research provided. Integrity is one of the most used words on the plant, used words on the planet. And it's the least really? defined. Yeah, it's the least defined. Wow. And I was able to define it. But one of the things that was defined, and you're going to talk about feelings, is um, saying what you are going to do and then doing what you said was at the top of the list for people. Even if you say you're going to fire me, they don't see it. Uh, people in the participants in the study said, if you say you're going to fire me, you better fire me because I'm not going to believe you if you don't. And that was confusing for me. And what they said was the stress they felt during the firing process and then the boss not firing them caused them Ooh. so much emer- emotional pain that they held the supervisor responsible for the pain, even though they didn't get fired. Now, I, I think you might be saying, what? Yeah, because we're talking about feelings. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I um, yeah, because you start to prepare for this yep. event. You get yourself all ready, and you start looking at your future. Um, it's interesting with firing, though. There is an interesting thing. You never get fired from a job you actually want to do. Yeah. Um, it's, I, and if, I've asked that question so many times, and I've never had a single person that got fired that looked at the energy of it and went, oh, yeah, that said, oh, but I actually did want that job. Everybody says, oh, I hated that job, or I didn't like it, or there was a way better job coming up. So in that situation, it's like, what is actually true here? What is, you know, are they more upset because they didn't get fired and they actually had something greater showing up that they didn't get to have show up mm-hmm. in their life? Like, what's so right about getting fired? I'm not willing to see or yeah. be aware of. Yeah. <laughs> but emotion. So, so we've been having a conversation within Access recently. And just it, well, it's been there forever, but somehow we're talking about it differently. It's like I've never heard it said this way before. But feelings are just like I've talked about pain in the body in so many of our calls or shows that we've done. Yeah. Um, feelings are are an awareness you're not willing to have. Feelings are always an awareness, and that's the first thing you get is the awareness, and then you get the feeling that just locks you down. Um, so a lot of these things, you know, someone that doesn't have integrity or someone that betrays us, mm-hmm. there's an awareness about it that then we turn into a feeling. 
that yeah. then doesn't allow us to have the awareness. And it's a yeah. very interesting to have that ask those questions of yourself when you have feelings is what awareness am I not willing to have here? I mean, it could be the awareness that like, oh, I always knew that person was a total idiot or that they were going to total cheat, totally cheat me. And I'm, and then you don't want to know you had the awareness and you put this feeling of sadness or betrayal, or I want to kill the person out there <laughs> instead of actually having the awareness of what you truly know. Um, and so it's a, it's a great exercise and there's a clearing. You can say, you know, what, what feelings am I using to mm-hmm. create the unawareness I am choosing in the situation? And you can ask that question and then do that, you know, good, bad, right, wrong, hot, pock, all nine shorts, clearing statement afterwards to clear energies around it. So you have more clarity. This is my go-to questions right now because I'm, I'm starting to get so much more clarity for me about how I've, and I have had sad days. But I'm not always happy. Feelings can, you know, get me sometimes. Yeah, um, me too. And this is starting, I'm starting to break out of that more with those questions. Uh, so, and all the stuff we're talking about, the, the betrayal or when you don't, when you trust someone and they don't show up, will we'll bring up these things that are actually creating us not having access to our knowing. Yeah. You know, Glenna, one of the things and one of the reasons we mm-hmm. wanted to do this show is because one of the, what I discovered in speaking to hundreds of people, and I think I mentioned this during the break, 1,200 pages of interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. typed up wow. typed up interview transcription and one of the things that happened after I was done with this dissertation with my research right I was completely depressed I mean I hit one of the lowest points of my life that's when I dialed wow. the wrong phone number and, and, into the and, <laughs> and said yes to doing radio um, so what was so good about doing this research uh, maybe <laughs> maybe yeah. I was a point in my life that I didn't hang up on a phone uh, phone call and was more open to a new direction. Possibly, yeah. And right. you know that there's that question we always use: who who does it belong to? Yeah. You know, you just listened to twelve thousand interviews or whatever that was of people yeah. that were depressed. How yeah. much of that was even yours? Yeah. You know, I mean, you're picking up all of that and you're reading about it every day and writing, you know, dissertation. That's going to be so much around you all the time. It's a hard one to pull yourself out. That tool is actually quite useful. Um, yeah. If anyone else is in that situation right now in their life, to say, okay, truth, is this mine or someone else's? If it lightens up at all, it's not yours. You get more access to you, which is, you know, it's, a, it's almost too simple of a tool. But I tell you, if you use that for three days, for every thought, feeling, and emotion you have, who does it belong to, you'll have more access to you than you've ever had before. Um, yeah. I used the tool last night. And I, I did. I said, who does this belong to? And, you know, people think that the answer that you might get is is sometime crystal clear. Um, I was really clear it didn't belong to me. <laughs> and and it's cool. It's cool you saying that because that's actually what most of the time shows up is you get, oh, this is in mind and you have no idea whose it is. Right. I mean, it's maybe some sad person in, you know, a totally different city that you just became aware of. You usually don't get a a name in your head. Occasionally it shows up. That's kind of fun. We love that stuff when it's really clear. Um, But it's most often just, you know, it's not yours, which means you know who you are more, which is fun. Exactly. Exactly. You know, part of these questions, and we're going to skip break because there's a few more things that I would love for you to help us with today. Um, You know, we use the word trust. Who do we trust? Do you tr- do we trust ourselves? How do we trust is the question I love that you sent. I love that you asked the question, how do you trust? Now, I'll tell you what Linda says about me. You know, Linda. Linda says mm-hmm. about me that I will give people an A plus the minute I see them, even if I don't know them. I will be, I, I enter a relationship uh, with open arms and trusting. And so yeah. she will say to me over again, oh, my gosh, there you go again. Why can't you see this? Why?" And I'm like, okay, I must be dazed and confused. But what do you mean when you say, how do you trust? Because I love that question, and yet I want to know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've kind of been talking about how yeah. you trust by knowing what you know, by if it's light or heavy, and not going in with blind faith. You know, I, the, my, one of my favorite stories that, that describes the whole trust thing is that one, which most people have heard, is the scorpion and the frog. And the frog, <laughs> the scorpion asked the frog to take him across the water. 
And he says, no, but you're a scorpion. You'll sting me. And the scorpion's like, no, I would never do that. And they go across the water, and midway through the lake or river or whatever he's in, the scorpion stings him. And the frog's like, what did you do that for? He goes, well, I'm a scorpion. That's what I do. It's like that's how you try. You know that the person that's talking to you is who they are and not pretending that they're not something, not pretending that they're going to override who they be just because they said so or just because you think they should or it'd be really cool if they weren't what they were. Just knowing that and then basing your choices on that. Um, you know, the, he could, the frog could have said, well, I know he's going to sting me and put something around his finger so it didn't work. I mean, there's lots of choices a frog could have had made if he was willing to be aware of who he was actually dealing with on that, in that fable. Um, and it was also funny, I was looking up little quotes of trust before the show, and almost all of them are about not trusting, not going oh. in with blind faith. You know, I can trust you as far as I could throw you is one of them. that we know so we know this we actually know this but we so often go into um we're going to blindly trust that the person says they're going to be or do what they actually are not going to yeah you know glenna when i ask people to define this this is what they they were talking about the way you just said it you know one person said you you know you need to say what you're going to do and and then do it if something changes please help explain uh, so that we understand, you know, why we can't count on that thing happening. If you make a promise, keep it. If something doesn't work out, talk about it honestly. And then it goes yeah. on, you know, words and actions have to match. Be accountable for what you say and do. It goes on and on about actions matching words. How does that fit right. in? Well, that's kind of our ideal. It's almost like our utopian ideal that that will actually show up. It doesn't so much. Sometimes it just can't because the person's not capable of doing what they're saying. Um, Mm -hmm. But if if you're aware, you're not going to be surprised and shocked and upset when it doesn't show up the way people say. Um, And that's where the question, like I said earlier, what's so right about this? I'm not getting in those situations can be so helpful for you. Because there's going to be a little glimmer of something. You know, maybe it couldn't get done. It shouldn't have been done that way anyway. Maybe you need to hire someone else to do it or work with someone else. But going into, you know, that they're wrong, you're wrong, the situation's wrong, getting angry with them and resentful doesn't contribute to creating anything for you. You know, resentment doesn't create more ever. Mm -hmm. Allowance is what we create more. And having allowance that the person won't do it and then going, huh, well, that didn't work for me. Bye-bye. Let me go create something else over here. It's a lot more mm. easier on us. Yeah. If we can I, do you, it. It's a little muscle you have to build, though. You have to build thank the muscle you. a little bit. I was just going to ask you about it. Yeah. yeah and, and so part of that muscle building is, you know, honesty has been stated as the backbone of trustworthiness. And, yeah. you know, we haven't talked about honesty. It's almost implied. But, you know, a lot of times it's not. You know, do we get confused about the word honesty? Oh, I think we do quite a bit. And we're not even honest with ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that's not something, you know. <laughs> I mean, we go, we go and look at the mirror and tell ourselves how horrible we are and how mm. horrible we look all the time. We're not being honest with ourselves most of the time. So expecting other people to be honest with us when we can't even um, be that with ourselves, asking quite a lot. Uh, mm. And most people, what they say isn't always congruent with what they're doing or being. Those are where the questions can help you have more clarity. Like, truth, is the person going to do this? Is what they're saying is true? It's like, don't listen to what they say, listen to what they do. That's where the honesty is. It's not what's coming out of their mouth, it's the way they're being and what they're doing and creating that you can actually be aware of who they are and what's true for the other person you're wanting to go into business or relationship with. And then you can know, well, so, okay, they're being or doing this, can I work with that person? Can right. I create a relationship with that? And then it's choice, you know, and it could be absolutely you can work with them. They'll blather on and say their silly stuff, but you know what they're going to do. And that may be wonderful for your business or wonderful to be someone you work for, but not, but then you're never going to be confused because you're already aware of them. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and what what I just heard you say is is so important, and this happens in relationships, intimate relationships. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute. 
we haven't even started the business relationship or let's even say the marriage and you're showing up in a way that I can't trust you now, but wait a minute, it's going to get all better when we get fully engaged in the business. We say the same thing in marriage. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah you did that then, but you know, once we get married, it's going to be all good. Right. And have you ever seen that show up that way? <laughs> wow. No, not even on the big screen, a uh, big blockbuster movie, but we want to hold no. on to that. You know, what is it that keeps us tethered to it? Is it fear? Um, it could be fear. I think it's a lot of expectations and projections of what you think something should look like, which keeps oh. you from ever seeing what it actually is. We expect mm-hmm. people to be people they're not for us. That's not honoring them and who they are, because to ask someone to be someone they're not for you because you expect them to be isn't very fun in any relationship. We do Mm. that with ourselves, too. And then we project what we think should be our ideal relationship onto that. You know, and for a while, people try to make you happy, you know, with your projections on them and try to do what you expect them to do. But that doesn't last very long. You start to get resentful because you're killing yourself to try to meet up to someone else's expectations. You know, there's not a lot of allowance for the person you're wanting to create with in any of that. An allowance is where you can create from. Having allowance for the person and who they be and what they can create. And then you can start seeing possibilities that are even greater because it's coming from who they be, not something you're expecting them to be. You can't grow from expectations. You can only grow from awareness and allowance. You can create mm. more from that place, but not from something that's expected because it never turns up out that way anyway. No, it doesn't. And, you know, part of this for me is um, I can really point to a lot of times in my life that my expectations were so low that I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised most of the time. Um, and, and, you know, part of this is, is re- have we ever talked about expectations? Have we ever done a show on expectations? I don't know if we have. Uh-oh. We may that's have our way next back, show. But it could be fun. <laughs> it's time for a fun, yeah. reboot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we need to we need to talk about an expectation reboot because you know I think expect I thought you know I think expectations is again one of those very misunderstood words, and it gets confused with attachment, but trust. Yep is a word that we use every day. We use it in personal, we use it in work, we use it in our government, we even have it on the back of our money. Um, right. How can you help us clear some energy around this? Um, Wow. You know, everything you're, everything you decided trust is that it isn't, would you be willing to uncreate and destroy all of that? That one's a good one. And all of that, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Because that's where we get messed up with it, is we think it's, it's something that it's not. And that stops us from the awareness of what we actually know. I mean, we might have a different president if people hadn't trusted mm-hmm. what he said, which he didn't mm-hmm. do. Like, how often is that, are those things that we trusted someone said they were do not showing up just in our government right now? Mm-hmm. And yeah. if you're willing, you know, and how, and how many of us knew it wasn't going to be true? Like, you could hear things and go, wow, that doesn't even match anything that I, right. that I see in the future. You know, we, so many people knew. And you go against your knowing when you trust something. So what if you actually knew that you knew and trusted what you know more than what people say? Yeah. You know, it's funny because I, uh, my friends told me that I was an overreactor. I was overreacting and I wasn't necessarily overreacting to the candidates. I got hung up on why a vice presidential candidate would seal Mm -hmm. all of his congressional records. And everybody thought I had just lost my mind. And, you know, why was I, why was I concerned about that? But I think we've talked about it today. You know, there are Mm -hmm. some relationships in life that we want things disclosed to us. If, if I'm going to marry somebody, there's a certain level of disclosure that we probably want to talk about. And I think that's part of the conversation today is, you know, what is it that we can look at within ourselves, Glenna, to know and, and, and be confident in how we show up. What a great show. Thank you so much for today. What's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with? 
today's personal message. You know, choose for you. Create a life that works for you. Choice is 10 seconds. If it doesn't work out, you can always choose something different. I love it. And, you know, for me, uh, part of what my message was, and certainly what I learned from all these people that were kind enough to share their story, is that trust is an inside job. It has to start with us. And the rest, it's kind of like the cherry on the whipped cream that's on top of the icing that's on top of the cake. And what that means is sometimes it's just about the top layer. Other times you got to dig deep to find the goodies. We'll see you next time. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.